In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We are drawn to powerful things in tiny packages. Many of us are fascinated, at least in movies, with explosives. And they take a little piece of C4 or something and incredible power within. Some of us like hot peppers, bright lights from tiny bulbs. Our movies are filled with things that people are chasing after, like tiny batteries that power a whole city, rings of immense power, or some new formula that allows you to go 30 miles on a thimble full of gas. Take our cell phones. No one wants a giant, well, I guess they do, for the screen. But we enjoy packing an incredible amount into a small and tiny package. Imagine, then, if you could do this with love. Think of the person or the people that love you the most in this world. For most of us, it's probably our parents. So consider your parents in this example, or someone else you prefer. But imagine, imagine if you could put all of your parents' love for you into something very small, like a button that you have on your clothes. If you could put all their sacrifices, all the love they gave you from the time when you were a baby and had absolutely no idea how much they loved you. Every time they worried for you, every time they made plans around you, every time they made lots of sacrifices for you, again, when you were a baby and didn't even know. You know, St. Francis de Sales observes that uh, children need to be commanded to love their parents, but parents need no such command to love their children. Imagine, though, if they went beyond that normal amount of love. Imagine if, if somehow they had loved you before you were even born, before they had ever met each other. Imagine if, when they had been children themselves, they were sacrificing and doing things all for love of you. Then imagine, too, our parents usually being human, that their love was perfect and not the imperfect love it was. Imagine if they could take all that love that they'd given you of your whole life, before you were born even, and able to put it into a little thing, put it into a button, and then give that button to you right before they died. So you could have their love with you always. Consider the love, then, that God has for man. God has not just for man in general. God has for each and every man. First, by creating him, setting him above all earthly creatures, caring for him when he fell. Consider most of all, of course, the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must remember that because our Lord was perfect, absolutely perfect, and absolutely powerful, he could have redeemed us with the tiniest thing, the tiniest sigh, perfect sigh, of our Lord would have been enough to satisfy the justice of the offense of original sin. It's amazing to think about. It would have been enough to satisfy the justice, enough to satisfy that need. But it would not have been enough to express his love for us. When we enter in tomorrow, as we have through most of Lent, we enter into the passion of our Lord. We do well to keep that fact in mind. It doesn't diminish the sufferings at all. If anything, it magnifies them. It's going over and above what was necessary for justice, again, to show his love for us. And like I said earlier, 
not to show his love for man in general, in a generic sense, which for us is the easiest way to love our neighbor, the generic neighbor, that doesn't offend us. He offered his whole passion, all his sufferings, everything that he did for each and every one of us singly. It come up many times in the revelations of the saints, and it's confirmed again many times by the doctors of the church, that if it were possible, our Lord would come down all over again and suffer everything that he suffered for each one of us. So when we meditate on his passion, we do well to remember that this is his sign of love that he does not for everyone, for everyone, but for each and every one of us in particular. Now, true, obviously, he expresses his love in his miracles, in his teaching. Those are our fantastic demonstrations of God's love for us. But we know from our own experience that there is no demonstration of love like suffering. If you want to know what a man truly loves, look at what he makes the greatest sacrifices for. Now, we can love things with very imperfect love. We can love things that are evil, that are bad for us. But we see that too. When people make sacrifices to keep an evil thing in their life, things like drugs, sacrifice a lot for that. People with disordered attachments, undue attachments to things, sacrifice a lot to keep those attachments, even their family and friends and their soul, unfortunately. But you see what they love because it's what they're willing to sacrifice for. Hopefully, too, we have been able to, in some imperfect way, express our love for Christ through the sacrifices that we have made throughout this whole time of Lent. Hopefully those have been an expression of our love for him. And although the, the 11th hour was a little bit ago, well, maybe it's 11.30 now, it's never too late. There's still days left in Lent to offer up those sacrifices out of love for our Lord. And we would do well to remember that it is the quality, the depth of love that we invest our penances with that matters over their quantity. That good penance is done in the next couple days out of pure love for God will be worth more. It is not too late. Or if we've fallen off our penance plan, it's not too late to go back. What is a greater sacrifice than one's own life? That sacrifice will only be worth what that life was worth. And so because our Lord's life is of infinite value, so is his sacrifice. To return to our imaginary button, our Lord Jesus Christ poured all of his love for us into the sacred Eucharist. The same love that created us, that moved him to descend from heaven to us, that worked miracles for us and taught us. All that love is contained in the Holy Eucharist. But how much more than this the love that he had to suffer and to die for us. And again, not to suffer and die for man generically, but to suffer and die for you personally. All of the love that our Lord Jesus Christ has for you each and every one is contained in the Blessed Eucharist. Yet how many men do not pay any love for their Savior. Even among Catholics, how many receive casually, or, God forbid, 
commit sacrilege. And what of all those times when we have wearied of prayer before the Blessed Sacrament, when we have made our thanksgiving hastily without recollection or not made it at all, how often have we sacrificed a little time to be with our Lord for things of lesser importance but of greater ease. Let us take advantage of this great feast today. We cannot pay back an infinite love in kind. All we can do is join our little finite, limited love to our Lord's. But this, of course, is all that he desires, to love us, to show us how much he loves us so that we will love him. For he does not benefit from loving us. He knows that we do, and that we benefit by loving him. Let's take advantage this time that our Lord is with us. Let's remember to love him in our own little way in the most blessed sacrament all the days of our life until, God willing, we will receive that sacrament one last time before we go to meet our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.